When children misbehave, they are told that the bogeyman will get them. In Spain they're threatened with Enrique Tomati the vampire of Barcelona. But who was Enrique and what did she do to deserve such a horrible nickname? On the 10th of February 1912, in Barcelona, Spain, a young girl named Teresita Guitart Congost, met a homeless beggar woman. The woman promised her many lollies if she went with her. She took the lady's hand and started walking. After a while, she realized that she was walking further and further away from her home, so she started to protest and struggle. The homeless beggar lady had a black cloth which she tied around Teresita's head and carried her for the rest of the distance. When the cloth was removed, Teresita was in an apartment, and there was another little girl there. The beg lady cut Teresita's hair, told her she didn't have any parents anymore, that she was to call her stepmama, and changed her name to Felicita. Teresita was very young, and had no idea what was going on, so did as she was told. For the next few weeks the beggar lady would go out during the day and would leave Teresita in the house with the other little girl, whose name was Angelita. There were rooms they were not allowed to enter, but one day they decided they would anyway, and in that room they found a sack full of children's clothing. The clothes were covered in blood. A big boning knife was also in the bag, covered in blood. One day Teresita, without really thinking, went to the window and looked out. A lady from a neighboring property was looking back. She looked straight at Teresita. The beg lady quickly came over to the window. The neighbor asked her who the little girl was, but she didn't answer. She closed the window and drew the blinds. A few weeks later, on the 27th of February, the girls were in the apartment on their own again when the beggar woman returned, and this time she was with some policemen. The police asked the girl what her name was. She told them her real name, not the made-up name the beggar woman had given her, and that was how one of the most famous abduction cases of Spain was revealed. And it ended the eerie career of Enrique Marti. Her mistake, was kidnapping a child whose parents caused a fuss. Teresita's photograph had been in the newspaper every day since her disappearance, and when the neighbor saw her in the window, she recognized her. She mentioned her suspicions to someone else, who went to the authorities. An excuse was found to raid her house and that is, when there, police found Teresita and Angelita. It was Angelita who had the most shocking story to tell. She told of how there was once a little boy named Pepito who also lived there. One night Angelita saw Enrique kill him on the kitchen table. Little is known of Enrique's life before moving to Barcelona, Spain in the early 1900s. It was known she was very attractive, and that she worked in several upper-class houses as a serving girl. It didn't take her long to realize that she could make more money from her looks than as a servant, so went into prostitution. Her time as a prostitute also showed her the darker, seedier side of human nature. Acting on the demands of her clients, and her own, baser instincts, she rented out a nice apartment and opened her own brothel in 1909. This brothel, though was not the normal variety. Her brothel was for the pedophiles of Barcelona, and was filled with children aged from 5 to 15. This brothel was entirely for the richest and fully depraved men of this city. She looked so innocent, and had such an authoritative air about her, that children seemed to trust her and would follow her. Apart from Teresita and Angelita, these children were not destined to live for long. Once their usage was over in the brothel, they would be killed. Enrique's brothel was even raided once. A case was opened up but it was all mysteriously swept under the rug. It is assumed, that someone with power, who frequented the brothel, managed to hush up the case. Prostituting minors is one thing, and something which can never be forgiven, but what she did to those children once their time was up was another thing entirely. You see, Enrica saw herself as a bit of a witch doctor. Whilst servicing the rich men of the area, she would also provide potions and poultices to wives of these men. Potions entirely made up of children's remains. 
she would kill her poor little victims, and then she would crush the bones, combine the powdered bones with body fat and blood, and would sell her elixirs and facial creams to the privileged. And worse still, those who purchased her potions knew exactly what they were buying. Many aging nobles craved the infant remains, believing the benefit was that it slowed the aging process. She reached a point where by day she was a beg lady, out on the prowl in search of children, and by night she would put on her best dress and go out to the elite society balls and gatherings, mingling with the upper class. During the investigation, it was discovered that Enrica had several apartments in Barcelona, all designed for different uses. One in particular was used as her execution chamber, and, was littered with remains, jars of body parts, others of hair and blood and fat. During a raid of all of her premises, the police located at least ten bodies, prepared perfectly for their cosmetic purposes. They also found ancient books made of parchment which had handwritten recipe of greens and potions. There were coded letters and notes which caused a lot of controversy as they detailed a list of names of very important figures of the city at the time. It is believed they were clients of this evil woman. She operated her business over the span of 20 years, so it is assumed she kidnapped a large, but indeterminate number of children in that time. For her crimes, she was dubbed the Vampire of Barcelona. She was imprisoned while the investigators gathered more and more evidence against her. If found guilty, she would have faced execution. One year and three months after being arrested, her fellow inmates attacked her and beat her to death. Although dead, this did not give the families of the victims any closure, as the full extent of her horror went to the grave with her and she was buried in an unmarked grave.